Welcome back to the channel. That was St Helena. Now it's off to Recife and with luck we'll make a stop at Ascension. Let's see how it goes. We waved goodbye to Mark and Amy and Ben on Sage and headed on out to the Wild and Woolly. Well, that was St Helena in all its volcanic majesty. Jamestown, up on a hill. It was all a bit like being home in Scotland. We've got cliffs and headlands like these. All very dramatic and impressive. Welcome to Ascension. We put the brakes on last night to avoid arriving in the pitch black. And I'm quite glad we did because there does seem to be some activity in the anchoring area which is reportedly foul and has a giant hose pipe running through the middle of the ocean. So let's see what happens next. One of the good things about having a trip line boy is you can see where your anchor is and when you're pulling back on it you can see if it moves. One of the bad things is that passing cruisers come along and either chop it up or go, oh look there's a handy mooring. That's a ranker watch alarm, that gets you out of bed pretty quick. So here we are at our rest stop in Ascension. Lovely beach. Jeez, maybe even a beach bar in the corner there, but not much sign of life. So that's it. And it's this way for about 1,214 miles, 642 metres. He's at it again. He never stops changing the wheel on this hot and sea. He put on the one for a lot of wind and there isn't a lot of wind, so he has to hang off the back of the boat like this. To change the wheel. Well, good morning. Day two, very bumpy night last night. So now we're putting on more sail. So, oh, what pros to order we do we do things in? Life has been made simpler getting rid of the code sail because we could, with no electric winch as you know, but new, due to the new winch handle, wincher, we can get it away without Stuart running up and down the deck. Right, this is the e wincher electric winch handle, which we bought two reasons one to get the reef lines in, for Anne to get the reef lines in. And secondly, to get the cord sails furled. Previous technology was for me to run up and down the side deck, which was one step away from going over the side. Either that or pulling muscles. So we bought this. So, squeeze of the trigger, and off it goes. Okay, so he does the e-wincher on that side, and I let the sheet off. And it's a big sail and we're taking it down to put up an even bigger sail because there's not very much wind. Okay, so now we go up forward and we drop the code zero. Uh, that sail's coming off and this sail's going on with the code D. Lightweight. It's just not enough wind out here to propel at any good speed. Oh, 
you'll notice I've got gloves on. You couldn't do this job without gloves on. <laughs> Kind of unfurling itself at great speed. There we go, unfurl. And what we have out here now, and Stuart's pulling it in, is the massive Code D lightweight reaching sail. We're lucky to be in a reach. There we go, that's what we pick up a knot. As you can see, there's nothing to see. Sun goes down on another day. There it goes, you can hear it sizzling from here. Whoosh! Green flash. I'm looking a bit black. Time for bed, said Zebedee. There you go, the empty horizon of the great South Atlantic grey. And our first ship in uh, 3,000 miles or something. I wonder what he's carrying. Looks like oil. Or maybe it's a Russian ship with stolen Ukrainian grain. That's nice. Beautiful morning. Quite a flat sea, relatively. And there's nobody on the horizon and we haven't seen anybody for four days. So having worked ourselves into a lather to try and get here on time, we are now trying to go as slow as we can because not only do we not want to arrive in the dark, but we have to arrive at at least half tide. And then, whoa, did you see that? They've obviously had a slow day. Slow month, perhaps. Whoa, if you'd want. Yeah, I'm afraid we're not going very fast, guys, so it's not very exciting. You can scrub the weed off the hull, could you? There's been a dearth of wildlife the whole way, hardly any birds. Closing in on Recife. You can actually see the masts of the boats in the marina, so we are getting there. Finally here, just about. Yeah, so a hang a right at the Banco des Ingles, and then a hang a left up there at the Green Mark. We're entering up the final furlong past all the big ships. Saturday morning dance class. Babidas. I think that's get yourself a drink right here. And then up to cafe culture. And this is the mooring field at the abandoned yacht club. And I guess part of the old town. Quite looking forward to have a look around. Maybe get another sarong. And I think these are the water taxis that come over from that. <sighs> Not a mosque, it looks like some eternal flame type thing. We'll have a look and tell you later. But yes, you get the, the ferry over from there. We don't speak Portuguese, so it's going to be like having our tongues cut out. Future Olympians out doing their Saturday morning practice. Imagine doing that in warm water. Now, when I were a lad, and then the beachside property for those that can't quite stretch to a boat. And the guys from the yacht club very kindly sent out two of the marineros to help us. So we've got one on board and one on the dinghy behind. Follow that taxi. A gente vai de frente, depois a gente vai. Opa! 
Põe pra volta. Ok. Copiou? Think so. <laughs> Did you understand that? <laughs> I think that was go up there and spin it around. Hmm. I don't see any boys. Right, so the original plan was a boy for the bow and then reverse in but that doesn't look like it's happening. No good, crosswind. Where are we going? Uh, up there. Fazer volta. Okay. Vai ajudar ele. So after all that pirouetting, we were tied up, nipped ashore for a quick dip in the pool, a drink, and then it was off to bed. Next up, we're going to have a walk round Recife. Come and join us in our next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, or indeed if you even didn't enjoy it, give me a big thumbs up. Thanks. <laughs>